a very bullish Pep Guardiola uh, on the back of the news that John Stones will be out for up to six weeks. But has he got a problem? Yes, uh, by lack his, of numbers. By, <laughs> by his admission, no, he likes the challenge, but you know, I've not seen him react like that in a press conference before. Um, yes, of course he's got a problem. Really not replacing Vincent Company was a huge loss, would be a huge loss for any team. Loss or error? I think Vincent earned the right to leave and pursue a different career, obviously play a, play a manager in Belgium, so he earned the right and went with his head held high and a fantastic captain, one of the Premier League's best. Uh, but then Laporte has been fantastic, mm -hmm. you know, and you mm. think, OK, you can build uh, a solid defence around him, obviously that injury. Um, Would that have been enough, though, Phil, with just the three, if you take him, Stones and Otamendi? Well, the, the, the thing I like about Pep is... And you've got to remember what he'd done at Barcelona. He put Mascherano, a defensive midfielder, in that back four. Now, albeit different in La Liga, because they, they have so much possession, they don't have to defend that often. Now, I've got no qualms that Fernandinho can do a great job in the, mm -hmm. in the back yeah. line because he's got all the attributes. He, he sniffs out danger. He's tenacious in the tackle. He can jump. So he can go in there, and he's got the experience. So I'm not really worried about that. I guess fans would say, well, one out, one in. And that's, that's the thing with the modern day era. So should they have replaced someone of a, of a certain pedigree when Vincent left? Yes, they should have. If, now if they can suffer. find them. Well, you can, you just have to pay for them. You know, if you can, Maguire. Harry, Harry, Harry Maguire. Koulibaly, who we've seen tonight, who I think is, uh, Napoli wanted 90 million for. And you think, well, if Maguire went for 80, 85, Koulibaly at 90 would be a snip. De Ligt was, was available, you know, so there were players that could do the job. Well, the interesting thing as well, though, is that the spotlight is obviously more on Manchester City's central defence because of what happened at the weekend. Yeah. Which if they'd been keeping clean sheets and everything was hunky-dory, yep. this probably wouldn't be as highlighted as much. Yeah. But the facts are they conceded by their standards some... Not so clever goals. No, and you know the Otamendi mistake was terrible. The standards for you know a, a top class, a world class team. I mean, you, you look at him here. He's looking for the ball. Yet yeah, we, you know, we know Pep wants to get his centre halves on the on the ball. He, he has a look there. He just takes his eye off the ball. Doesn't doesn't even see the press. It, is it because he's not used to opposition's pressing down? You got to, but you got to know you're at Carroll Road. They're going to be pressing. But how he's how he's not seen it out the corner of his eye. And then when he's got the ball, being very just relaxed and taking an extra touch where he didn't even need to. There's a very frustrated centre half oh, to my yeah. left. He's, he's well, the thing is, the table. If, he's, <laughs> if he's played to him, Stones is shouting at him, play it back to the goalkeeper. He's taking it. All he has to do is pass it back with his left foot. But he decides to take it from his left and then pass it back with his right. I don't understand that. If you're confident with that first touch, probably won't be now, but just play it back straight away. They're screaming at him. And as, as Sid says, your peripheral vision, you know that those yellow jerseys are there pressing you. He's got to do better. He should be doing it quicker. Pass it back. As, obviously, if they, if they go to press again, Norwich, then you make another angle. But even in that pass back, it, it, it wasn't like, right, well, you mm. deal with it. It was, it was just, if, to me, it was just like shifting responsibility again. But the other thing is, as well, um, Edison uses his feet fantastically. Yeah. He's a, a terrific distributor of the ball. Play centre half. <laughs> he relies on good balls back to him as well, doesn't he? Sure. Decent passes. Yeah. So, w will it affect the way they play, whoever comes in? I doubt it. I, I can't see Pep ever sort of looking at that and thinking, oh, his principles about playing at the back. I mean, even when he was at Bayern, he was, he was doing phenomenal things with splitting the centre halves at the edge, at, at the sides, really sort of almost on the touchline, mm. you know, things that were unheard of. So, his principles are to play at the back. He's got the players to do it. At, I just think it was a bad day for, for Manchester City all round. I mean, I've got to say, uh, and I don't think it was bravado, I loved Pep's reaction there. I he said, yeah, bring it on. You think it's a problem? Trust me, it's not a problem. We've got the players. We've got Fernandinho. I mean, Carl Walker can play right back. Yeah. Oh, we could go for, he could go to a three. And you've got Cancel Al coming in. Yeah. He mm -hmm. probably starts tomorrow night for the first yeah. time. Um, he's got the two youngsters, Garcia and Howard Bellis as well. Yep. So, and you wouldn't be surprised if any of them played because obviously the faith that he would put in. If he's saying that in a pre press conference to the rest of the world, what do you reckon he's saying in the dressing room? He's building up a wall to say, listen, everyone's against us now. 
you, each and every one of you to know your roles, your responsibilities. Um, you need to do some sacrifices for the team. You know, Carl Walker, you might not be able to get up and down as much as you would do. It might be a tight unit. That's what you're going to be saying to him. But that's the man management. That's the man management side to the, the, the modern day game. Do you think, much like Watford did in the game against Arsenal the, the weekend, after the game, we spoke to Tom Cleverley and he said, we, we sensed we could smell a nervousness, a, mm. a tentativeness. Do you think that West Ham will have seen that and they will be pushing up higher? Closing down, or is that a very dangerous game to play against Manchester City? Let's, let's get one thing straight here. Manchester City aren't, aren't, aren't Arsenal. Arsenal. Yeah. No, no I, 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 I understand yeah. that. That's um, fair. Yeah, but that, that's the modern game, isn't it? The high press. And because everyone is following the fashion trends, all teams are playing out from the back now. Yeah, you've got the option to, option to do it, but it doesn't mean you have to do it all the time. Um, yeah, West Ham will be sm smelling it, but I remember a couple of seasons... I got it wrong again, it's Watford actually, not oh, West Ham. <laughs> <laughs> so Watford, yeah, having so done it to Arsenal... There you go. Um, well, Watford, you know, great result against Arsenal. Um, they, will, they will press from the front, but I remember a couple of seasons ago when teams were pressing, I think Edison started going long and Aguero got in a couple of times and yeah. bypassed the press. Pep's got that in his locker, you know, he, he, he might be saying, invite that, invite that, and then we'll turn them. What do you make of this new if you like, fashion or vogue of playing out from the back? I, I like it. You know, footballing purists and romantics love that. That It looks very five-a-side, doesn't it? But, um, you know, a fair play, teams like Norwich are doing it, Brighton are doing it. So, yeah, you just have to have the player to do it. But you also need to know when it's not on. And that's, that's the subtlety. And that's where the good teams know when to do it or not. And sometimes it's not on when the crowd... When you get that vibe from the crowd. I mean, I covered... Arsenal Burnley uh, earlier in the season and they was playing out from the back and, and Burnley caught them out a couple of times but didn't really get any end products off but you could just sense that that little feel from the stand getting onto the pitch you're saying you could hear them saying just kick it just go long just someone get the back four yeah, but isn't, isn't that the worst thing you can do because to get comfortable with it yeah, you've got to be able it. to do it all well, the time what's the point training mm. Monday to Friday week in week out playing out from the back and when you get to the Saturday you're going to go right we're not going to do it now but then there are elements of a game, especially on Saturday, where you're 2-0 up away at Watford, bottom of the league, then you need a leader to go, right, do you know what? It's not on now. You're not showing for the ball. You're not, you're not looking comfortable on the ball. We'll just go long. We'll, and, and, and going long is still creative. You know, it's still not... Well, as you said, how many times will we see Edison do it? Exactly, mm. yeah. If, if there's a plan behind it, a long ball could be a clip into the front man. You know, it's not that nowadays it's not the 50-50 ball where a striker goes up and then the other striker runs in behind and, and gambles. It's now, you know, calculated long passes. But, but why are teams who patently can't do it trying? Because they're trying to copy <laughs> the best. Is, 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 is there, is there a, an almost a, a snobbery about going long now all of a sudden? No, there's not. I think a lot of, a lot of teams are still doing it. You know, the, the ethos behind it is you want to suck the opposition up on, onto your own penalty box so you can play around them bypass that press, take a, a, a huge amount of numbers out of the game, and then you need to be explosive and dynamic on the attack. It's interesting, though, isn't it? Because you look at, like, Haller's coming to the Premier League, Wesley, these are the big archetypal centre-forwards that can hold the ball up and have runners off them. So maybe there is some managers going, actually, we can't play out the back, we might have to go longer and let someone hold it and we can play from there. It's going to be interesting to see what Pep does as well, though. Not just who he brings in. And do you think he will stick with Otamendi, though, as one part of the partnership? Yeah, I think he will. I think he will. Uh, whether that's in a three or whether that's in a four, I don't know. But I think he will. I think his man management skills, I think he'll give him another game or another two games. Um, and then, it, then he'll start making a decision. Because, what, they're five points behind Liverpool now? That, that can't keep creeping. They've done it. They, they got back from eight last season, didn't they? I think it was. I don't think they could do that again this year.